Hey everybody, this is Tara McCollum with Beyond This Reality. And I'm coming to you to answer another question from the mini series. And it might be even a multiple questions. And sorry about the state of me. Um, I'm just coming back from my yoga class. And um, I was really internally pushed to have this video now. Um, and I just really pray that I am a vessel for spirit to speak to through because my thoughts are not all together on it. However, um, that's the state that I've been asked to come in. And so what is the question? What is the question that has been posed um, that I'm answering today? How do we stay in our own energetic field is one. And the other one that goes right with it is how do we not take on the responsibility or the, the heaviness of someone else's choices or energy? Breathing through this one. So I just wanted to share, um, as these questions have come through, I am highly aware, some people might call it empathic, um, really what empathy or empath, um, being empathic is, is the awareness of where other people are at, okay? And when it hits us, sometimes it hits us, so the energy of our awareness and what is happening with them hits us, and instead of moving through, it hits and goes in. So first of all, I want to move to the place of, in many energetic circles, they talk about protecting yourself. All right. What I would like to bring you is take whatever is true for you. I'm going to give you a different viewpoint on protecting yourself. If you're constantly in protection mode, Think of somebody who is in your life who's constantly in protection mode. Like if I called you up right now and I said, um, things are going to happen that are super bad today. You need to do everything that you can pr protect yourself. Like somebody's coming to hurt you, right? You would go into protection mode and what would happen? Like, how, like even when we saying that, what happens to your muscles? What happens to your body? Like there's this like, right? Like there is like gauntlets that are coming up. We're not just talking about beautiful white lights. We're talking about our body goes into protection mode. And it, like it gets solid, like it gets like bears down deep in like, and it almost like crunches up into the earth. Like to me, I'm like, I'm ready. And also I'm in this state. Like I'm aware, I'm aware, I'm aware. I'm ready for anything to hit, right? But I'm looking for the enemy right? If somebody says that to me, and how many of us are in that state all the time, looking, who's about ready to attack? Where are the attacks coming from? What is that in my body? It's another attack. Like anytime that we're feeling something, we're going, oh my gosh, I'm being attacked from somewhere else. And somebody else is trying to take my energy. And then that person like put something on me. Instead, that's not worked for me. I don't know how it's working for you. That's something that I'm going to give you is Ask if it's working for you. Is being in protection mode with fists up, um, is that working for you? The other part I wanna go to is what else we can be. We can be the space of like expansion. We are in a body, but we are also energy. And even our body is energy. So if you go into the science of how the body is created, the molecules are actually separated. None of them actually touch. Like they have spaces between them and then they're constantly in movement, right? And so that the more that we become energy, our energetics like expand, you know? And so we become this space like this. And so to me, even moving my body in that space actually helps me to get to the space of expansion, which when things are happening, they flow through me, right? I'm not even protecting, deflecting anything because when I become the space of protecting and deflecting, I actually 
protect and deflect all kinds of good things too. And my awareness is really not keen on those things that are coming in and like being like luxurious in those and like luxuriating, right? It's constantly like, where's the bad? Like, so you don't actually, actually, actually ever get to settle in and find a soft place to land and just like, right? Because you're in battle mode. So that, so I just wanted to preface with those two things. Next, and I really wanna be specific here, is the responsibility of those people who we're close to that we love, okay? Not going to the place of taking responsibility for the people that we love. How hard is that? <laughs> How hard is that? Because there's something inside of us that says, you over there, I love you so deeply. You're hurting right now. Or you're going in a direction that is gonna take you out. And I wanna like, right? Like we want to get in the way. We wanna take the brunt of their force, the direction that they're going, and we take it into our bodies. Or we want to, um, take on board like the pain that they're enduring. How is that working for you? I'm just gonna share from me, it's not working for me. There's areas in my life that I want so badly to do that. Like I want so desperately to go in and bring my magic to someone else's life. Like, because they're an extension of mine. And I bring it as much as I can, and yet they are an infinite being as well. And where I um, fall short sometimes is, is I do forget. We, we forget that they're an infinite being too, that they came into this experience, which is what this life is, this experience, in order to know themselves as the expansiveness, not as the solidness. And so sometimes, probably most of the time, when we lift their burden and take it on ourselves, we stop them from knowing themselves as a powerhouse that they are, that they can also come out of this and stretch and go, what else is possible and how can I be the creator in all this? We take away the I in that for them because we go in and we're like, we got you, we got you, I got you, I got you. So whether it's somebody who is an adult that we love, multitudes of adults, a kid, whatever it is, Like, sorry, I just keep getting pulled, pulled into like, it is, I'm with you that it is hard to just step back and say, I believe in you. I trust you. You've got this. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to advise. I'm not going to take it on. You've got this. You have got this. And then to be the energy space and consciousness that just surrounds them and really like really energetically is the space of going inside their body and inviting their infiniteness up, inviting their infiniteness up. And if there's anyone around them that is also entangled in it or causing it or whatever, inviting the infiniteness up. And here's the thing, is really getting clear on what your ask is, right? That you would ask that the greatest contribution for all concerned would happen in whatever way it would like to show up. Because here is the thing, whether you say the universe, the world, God, whatever you want to call it, consciousness, the collective consciousness, so many times, it sends things 
and they don't look anything like we ask. Nothing like we ask. And so we're trying to fix it, we're trying to fix it, and we're like, we're downtrodden, and we're saying like, this is not what I asked for. But we didn't actually take the time to say, is this what I asked for? And it looks totally different. It's appearing totally different than what I would have expected it to. And yet inside of it is exactly what I asked for. So I was actually just talking, not even to a client, to a friend yesterday. And I asked her the same question. I was like, is what's going on with the two of you, right? Is that what you asked for? Because she had asked, and I, I wanna share this, she had asked to show up as this immense giver right? The, like she, she'd been given to so much. And she was like, I just want to know myself as this giver and that lavishly overflows on someone else, right? And someone else in her show, life showed up as someone who was needy and it felt icky, right? And, um, and, and she was like, Ooh, it just feels gross. Cause sometimes it's not about them feeling gross. It's about our judgment about how we show up when we're needy. And, and she didn't ever like it when she showed up as needy. Like how many of us do? And yet, it actually is the invitation for somebody else to show up and be this space. And she's like, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I was looking for. I was looking for me to show up as that. But I wanted it to show up not this way. And I'm like, we don't get to choose how it shows up. We just get to choose how we show up when it shows up, right? So she could take on the responsibility of like, I don't want to be around this person who's needy or like that's icky and like he needs to sort it out or she needs to sort it out or whoever it is. Um, and, you know, getting into that instead, if we go back to our own life, how are the people around us showing up and are we willing for them to deal with their stuff and for, for whatever they're doing in our lives, for it to be invitation for us not to show up for them necessarily. In this case, it, it was for her to show up in her like overflowingness. Mm -hmm. However, she would like to, it to show up. But what else is it inviting you to? Is your life, like if you have somebody in your life who's not taking responsibility for um, something like, let's say they're not taking responsibility for their emotions or for the direction that they're going, or they're struggling with like the overwhelm of life. Are you willing to go back and not look at even theirs and just look at your own life and say, where in my life would I like to take responsibility for my emotions? Be more authentic. Am I willing to let them flow out of me without calling any of them wrong? To let them flow out and to see what the invitations are. Because when we get less judgmental about how we're supposed to show up in life, because right, so many people in this world is like, there's positive and negative. Bullshit. There, positive and negative, like you're just fighting, 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 positive, negative. It's all here. Anything that I'm sharing with you, you can learn it all up here till you're blue in the face and it doesn't affect your life until you embody it in your body, right? This is where we become the knower. We become the being, right? I be flow. I don't know if I don't flow. I embody like things flowing through me. I embody looking at somebody and saying, you've got this. And really like being that space of you've got this. I don't have to get in and tangle myself, show you how to do it. I don't have to take it on my shoulders, any of those things. Because the moment that I take it on my shoulders, take it in my stomach, that's where I'm really good at taking it in is like, I'll take it in my stomach and I'm going to twist and turn and I'm going to figure it all out for you. I get heavy and then I'm of no use to anybody else because when we're out of our space of radiance, we're out of our flow. And so are we willing to be so dynamically 
fierce that we stay in our flow, right? That we be the space of, you've got this, you've got this, I've got this. Like life is happening for us, it's happening for us. It may not look like it's happening for us, but that over there is happening for you. You're feeling crunchy and I'm gonna let you feel crunchy. You're feeling sad and angry and whatever else, I'm gonna let you feel sad and angry because in there you will, if you allow yourself to feel it, you will receive the invitation of what it's supposed to be. And I don't know what your invitation is because I'm not you. So when we get in and we try to take responsibility for somebody else's emotions, choices, whatever else, we impose upon them what our choices would be, what our invitations would be. And you know what? We are not them. Are we willing to flow with it? And sometimes flowing with it looks ugly. Man, I did some ugly crying today. <laughs> I'm kind of surprised like this hasn't brought up tears in, in itself, but like, you know, I, I cried before yoga class. I cried mostly during yoga class, crying so much that I had yuckiness coming out my nose. Um, all because I was so aware of what so many people around me are entrenched in and I care so deeply that I want to stop it. I want to stop the pain. I want to stop the torture. I want to stop the people who are consistently hurting other people. But I can't go and stop it for anyone else. Because sometimes that pain is showing up so that person will rise in themselves. Sometimes it's showing up so that they will like cry and let go of all the past stuff. Sometimes it's showing up and so that they will throw up. You know, like my youngest son last night, he's so empathic and some things were happening and just the pressure of it, he had to throw up and he just got it out of his body and then he was back to himself again. How many ways have you made it wrong for how energies flow in and out of you? And if you just let it happen, you would just let, <laughs> you would get back to the space of you so much faster. So Throwing up is not a wrongness. Crying is not a wrongness. If you need to go somewhere and you need to scream it out, if you need to like, you know, punch your fists on something, are you willing to make that all right? Not on somebody else, not taking it on anybody else, but like getting it out of your body. We are talking about not the brain. We are talking about the body is where we embody things. So if you are not helping to get it out of your body and let it flow through your body like it sticks in right so there is a piece of this that like we we go from here we're like here right up here is where it's all at it's in our head and if we just learn it we're gonna like move it no it when energy comes it hits in the entire body so how are you allowing it to move itself out and the more that you honor the way that it's asking to move out of your body the more ease you have with how it moves out of your body it doesn't become so intense because it you didn't lock it in um gosh my kids are my greatest teachers like out of all the the certifications and all the schooling that i've ever done they embody this stuff and so again my youngest he had situations where he would get super rageful and angry and all of it and i wanted to like talk him through i wanted to cuddle him i wanted you know to make it all right in the moment that i gave him space i didn't even acknowledge because he didn't want to be acknowledged in that time he didn't even want me to look at him the when I gave him space to be and do what he needed to do, it was like done in 30 seconds. It just flowed through him and he would scream or hit or whatever he would do. Not me. He didn't do it to me anymore. And it would just flow out and then he was back to his space of joy. And we didn't need to bring it up again and we didn't need to talk about it again because it was energy. I didn't need to understand. It just moved through and he needed to allow it to move out of his body. And now, because there's not this constraint of no, you can't and this, it's very rare for him to have the moments where the anger needs to come out in that way. Um, 
it's very rare. Like these days, he's super peaceful. And yet there's moments like that where the intensity of things that he was aware of made him nauseous and put, it gave him a super huge headache. And so he just got it out in that way by throwing up. And so that's not a wrongness either. And we don't even need to talk about it because he's already embodying the way that energy flows through his body. And then he goes back to his natural state space of being and the joy. Now he could go in and he could go, I'm pulling up things that are happening around me and I feel really bad because this person's treating that person bad and what was happening. And like, I don't like it. And so maybe I need to help change somebody. And then it would just entrench him and he would get twisted up into all this like smallness and he wouldn't get back to himself. And that's what so many of us as adults do. We try to understand everything rather than staying in the expanse, inviting people into that, taking responsibility for our own lives and our own energy, um, and allowing them to take responsibility, whether they're five years old, whether they're 50 years old, whether they're 80 years old, to have compassion and go, I get it. I, I would hurt too if I was in your situation. You can you have compassion and just go, and if you need to talk, I'm here. But inside of yourself, you're not taking it on and you don't take responsibility for them and you don't take their baggage because it's not yours to carry and it actually does not lessen their load. It just removes the ability for them to choose faster, right? Um, I, I watched a really awesome video once um, from an addict and she said, the greatest thing that you can do is allow us to hit rock bottom. Every time you get in the way, it prolongs the journey and we could actually take ourselves out before we hit rock bottom. Let us hit rock bottom. So how many of us are buffering other people's choices, other people's experiences? Are we willing to get out of the way and stop buffering them so that they can have the choices and um, have the life that they actually truly desire that possibly the struggle is leading them to. How many of us had to go through struggle in order to get to the choices that we have today? We don't have to, but how many of us chose struggle in order to choose ourselves and to, in order to choose expansiveness, right? I know I did. I chose a hell of a lot of struggle before I realized it didn't have to be that way. I didn't have to choose the dark darkness. I didn't have to choose resistance. I didn't have to choose pain. Other people have to go on their own journey. Like that's what they get to do in order to choose something that's way more expansive and to put their foot down for themselves. You can't put your foot down for somebody else. You just can't. They're a soul. They're an infinite being that gets choice. And the more that you come in between them and their choices, the more that you are buffering them from the life that they desire. Um, thank you for listening today. Thank you for um, allowing me to be uh, authentic. You can totally disagree with me. Um, again, every time I say anything, I ask you to to to. Um, tap into what's true for you. Thank you for letting me be like completely open to spirit speaking through me and being um, awkward and whatever else today. Um, I just wanted to come with the authenticity of, <sighs> I get you. This is a journey for all of us and we will never have arrived because it is a constant unfolding and a constant blossoming and a constant invitation to become more and to let go of more. And so even in my own life, like there's times where I know up here, like there's a, um, a learning that I shouldn't and I don't like, I don't have to take on other people's things, but it's not until I allow my body to take me on the journey of how it's going to let go and how it's going to flow that it actually releases. I can do as many exercises as I want, or I can breathe through. And the greatest thing is to tap in and to say, what is this? 
you know, how would it like to move through me? Um, is it actually working for me to constantly carry this? Is it working for anybody for me to constantly carry this? Is caring actually kind, right? So sometimes the way that we show up and we care is not kind to our bodies. It's not even kind to the other person because it's pretty much saying like, I care about you more than you care about yourself or I got you more than you got yourself. And really one of the greatest things in my opinion that we can be for another person is you've got you and you've got this and you've got me even more than, um, you've got yourself even more than I have you. And I'm here, I'm here whenever you need me, but you've got this, right? Cause we can't run somebody else's race and it's not gonna do them any good if we go out and we, we carry them on our back because it slows both of us down. So how are you consistently carrying somebody else on your back, slowing both of you down, that if you just put them down and let them run themselves, you could run next to them and smile and do your own race and both of you be this inspiration to run faster, wilder, freer, and everything else. Are you willing to stop asking everybody to get on your back during the race of life? Are you willing to put them down, to trust them to run for themselves, to trust that their legs will hold them up and that they'll be able to jump over the hurdles that if, you know, a swarm of bees come that you both know how to run away from the bees, um, whatever it is that, and that other people will come in and, you know, provide solace as well and um, it, alternative paths. Um, if things come up that are super hard, but that you both have got it if you stay on your own legs, right? Um, any questions, comments, anything, I'm totally open with, open to, <laughs> I can't even talk. And um, what else is possible now when, when we get out of the space of taking on the responsibility for everybody else's emotions, especially the people that we truly love and care about?